Alright, so I'm finally here to be doing this Aizen vs Gilgamesh video. I thought the answer to this would be kind of obvious, which is why I've been pushing it off for such a long time. But I still get consistently asked by people, you know, when is this video going to be coming out? So I figured, alright, let's just go ahead and do this video. I've been wanting to do more versus content and more uh, power scaling type content that doesn't focus on just one individual character, right? So I was like, alright, this is the perfect opportunity for me to finally do this video. And uh, we're just going to hop right into this, talking about how strong both of the characters are, how fast they are and what abilities they have and will ultimately decide who would win this battle. Now, we'll go ahead and start off by talking about how powerful Aizen is, as most of you should be familiar with the bleach scaling at this point. But basically, we have Bankai Yamamoto, who just by merely existing with his Bankai, was threatening to destroy the entirety of the Soul Society. And we know that the Soul Society is at bare minimum multi-solar system in size, as Kaname blatantly says that there are numerous stars in the night sky. And in some of the nighttime panels, you can see numerous stars in the sky, meaning the realm would have to be you know, large enough to compensate for all of those stars and the distance between each of those stars. Now in the fight with Gremmy, you could possibly upscale the size of the realm to galaxy to possibly even low multi-galaxy if Gremmy threw Kenpachi out into space and that space contains those galaxies and nebulas. So at the bare minimum, you have Yamamoto threatening to destroy a multi-solar system sized realm and at maximum it is a low multi-galaxy sized realm and Aizen obviously scales above Yamamoto as in his fourth form or his fourth fusion, he was stated to have transcended all hollows and shinigami so at that point he would have transcended yamamoto and he actually even got stronger after that by going into his monster form so he's easily above bankai yamamoto even in one of his weaker forms so he should scale to multi-solar system or low multi-galaxy now on to gilgamesh you're already probably going to realize that this is a bit of a mismatch because i'm not even going to be using some of the more impressive feats to scale gilgamesh's ap i'm going to be lowballing a character that he scales to in order to kind of just show that this is kind of a mismatch see there is a character in fate Extella known as the white titan safar who just by screaming was able to shake the infinite void of space so it's already an infinite third dimensional feat and so many characters in fate Extella are capable of beating the white titan safar you know nero tamamo and altera all do it in their storylines and altera actually fights gilgamesh and gets completely clapped up by gilgamesh and only with the assistance of her master is she able to somewhat tie against Gilgamesh, although Gilgamesh does give up the fight halfway through because uh, based on the events of Fate Extra CCC, he really cares about Hakunon, who's the master of Altair at the time. It goes into a lot of lore, but basically Gilgamesh gives up the fight because he doesn't want anything bad to happen to Hakunon because he develops a relationship with her in the previous game. But basically, Gilgamesh can take on this character that can beat the White Titan Safar, who can casually shake the infinite void of space, which is already an infinite third dimensional feat or a universal feat. Not even getting into how Safar is a threat to the moon cell, which gets even higher into like 5th dimensional to 8th dimensional feet. So already we have Gilgamesh being universal as compared to Aizen's solar system to low multi-galaxy at best. Now getting into Aizen's speed, we're going to be using the Ash Wallen slash Mime Hage scaling where, you know, Ichigo travels for 12 hours from the Soul Palace to the Soul Society. And we basically use that to get the distance. And then from there, we're like, okay, uh, how long did it take the Ash Wallen or the Mime Hage to make that same? journey and we're just gonna say that it took about five seconds to really give everything the benefit of the doubt when we're saying that Ichigo moved at the speed of light and after doing all these calcs right uh it only came out to Aizen being 8.6 thousand times the speed of light assuming he scales to all of these other characters right assuming that he is as fast as the stern reader or that he's able to keep up with Yuha which you know I think is a fair assumption to give Aizen you know he was you know being able to perceive and keep up with Yuha in combat at least for the little bit we saw him in the final battle but that would only put him at 8.6 thousand times the speed of light which is fairly impressive but n again nothing compared to what Gilgamesh has in store for Aizen because Gilgamesh has something known as immeasurable speed which I'm sure a few of you are familiar with but for those of you that aren't let me break it down you have any finite amount of speed you know say Mach 1 three times the speed of lightning or say 8.6 thousand times the speed of light anything that you can attach a number to would be finite speed above that that 
would be infinite speed. Any finite speed would be infinitely lower than infinite speed. And then above infinite speed, more than infinitely faster than that is inaccessible speed, which is where your character is able to move in a space that has no time. And then more than infinitely above that, you have immeasurable speed, which is where your characters are able to you know, travel through time or they're able to move in spaces that are beyond and outside of time, similar to the Solomon arc in Fate Grand Order, where Solomon creates a conceptual universe that is beyond and outside of time. It's even stated to be outside the normal temporal axis, which would mean that it's also in non-linear time, which all three of those are feats for immeasurable speed, meaning that Gilgamesh is so fast at this point that he would have an infinite amount of time to kill Aizen in an infinite amount of ways already at this point. But let's give Aizen the benefit of the doubt, right? Let's see if he can bring it back with some of his hacks. Now, when it comes to Aizen and his abilities, I can really boil it down to two things, his Zanpakuto and the Hogyoku. There's some keto that's pretty decent, like the Binding Ketos and Haiyan, which is the Flame Keto that actually has a data book entry that says that it erases the target from existence, but, you know, we'll break all that down later. Really, it comes down to the Hogyoku and his Zanpakuto. His Zanpakuto allows him to manipulate the five senses of his target, and as a Zanpakuto, it also allows him to attack the soul of his opponent, which is really good because that's a way to bypass their durability. The Hogyoku also gives him adaptation and very good regen. You can argue that he regen his entire body being destroyed by Mugetsu, however right after that we just see that it looks like his body was split in half and then he stitches himself back together. So. It's like he either completely regened the two half of his bodies and then stitched himself back together or just from the start he was just split in half completely. But I mean, arguably if he was able to regenerate his entire body being destroyed, that's very good. And then every time that Aizen is in a state like that where he's near death, he pretty much catches up to his opponent. Kind of like the same Zenkai boost, except a lot better because not like not only does he catch up to them, but he surpasses them by a large margin. So his Zanpakuto and his Hogyoku are his bread and butter and then, you know, maybe some keto like the binding ones or high in which has existence erasure right that's pretty much all aizen's got and let me explain why none of it would work against gilgamesh at all now gilgamesh's counters to these really boil down to two things one servants resist a higher version of erasure in conceptual erasure the servants are able to fight the demon gods in fate grand order which are stated to be conceptual beings yet even though they are conceptual beings servants can kill them with their regular attacks like they're no big deal meaning that servants that can fight against each other resist each other's conceptual attack meaning that aizen at best having existence erasure is not going to be enough to kill gilgamesh as even his concept resists getting erased not only that this also means that gilgamesh just firing one of his weapons casually at aizen would erase his concept and aizen has no resistance to that at all. Following this, the reason Kyoka Suigetsu would not work on Gilgamesh is because Gilgamesh has resisted BB's mind hacks, and BB is stated to have an eight dimensional complex mind, meaning that Gilgamesh was able to resist an eight dimensional mind hacks, and Aizen's, you know, Zanpakuto is nowhere near that powerful. At the very best, you can say that it is a universal hacks if you get Yuha up to universal and say that it was able to affect Yuha. So at the very very best it is a universal hacks and Gilgamesh is over here resisting eight dimensional mind hacks so Kyoka Suigetsu wouldn't work high end wouldn't work the sole aspect of a Zanpakuto wouldn't work and all Gilgamesh has to do is fire one of his weapons or even just you know walk up and punch Aizen because everything servants have within them have conceptual erasure imbued into them as they can do it passively and Aizen would cease to exist and he would have an infinite amount of time to do this to Aizen because because Aizen is so much slower than Gilgamesh. So that's the result. I'm sorry if it's a bit anticlimactic. I don't know if y'all were expecting it to be a lot closer, but Fate as a series is so much more powerful than Bleach that like, I'm pretty sure I could take any character from Fate and have them solo the entire Bleach verse. Like, I think that's how bad it is. So if there's those of you that wanted to see more Fate versus Bleach matchups, I don't think I'm going to be doing them in the future because they're really, really bad. However, I do really want to do more versus content on this channel. So if there are any matches that you want to see, go ahead and drop them in the comments down below. The ones that I'm kind of working on in the future is I'm thinking about doing like Hercules versus Broly because I really want to talk about Dragon Ball as I really enjoyed that last Broly movie. And I'm like, all right, how do I start talking about Dragon Ball on the channel? Because I really like it. Uh, I 
really want to do Ryuko versus Akame because I like uh, Ryuko a lot and that's a common match that I see her put in. And then the other one that I was thinking of was Natsu versus Luffy as that's another common matchup that I see all the time. Just keep in mind that a lot of those common matchups that you see all the time are a lot more one-sided than you might think. So uh, some of them I'm kind of thinking that I might not do, but if there's any matches you would like to see me cover, go ahead and drop them in the comments down below. I hope y'all enjoyed this video. If you do, please subscribe and like the video. Share it with your friends, all right? See if we can get some people triggered. <laughs> If you're upset and you don't like the result of this match or you think that I got something wrong, my Discord is always open. It's in the link in the description. Feel free to come in here and challenge me on this. I would love to have a debate with some of you guys on it. Um, even if you don't want a debate, maybe that's too aggressive for you. We can have at least some kind of discussion about it. But with all that being said, I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. You guys have yourselves a nice day. Peace late, guys.